All right, nerds, so here we are. First video of acidic environment. These are our dot points. This is dot point one and dot point one point two, and we just shot a minute ahead. Um, so we're going to talk about basically common acidic substances and also our uh, indicators, those things. All right, let's go. So what's the point? Today, by the end of it, you should be able to define, define the terms pH, what an acid is, what a base is in the preliminary year 11 sense, and what an indicator is. You also want to be able to list the acidity, so that's just whether it's an acid base or a neutral for some common substances, list some common indicators, and we're going to have a table started that you'll be able to fill out as we progress the unit of common acids, bases, and neutral substances. All right, so the acidity of common substances. Basically, pretty much everything we've, we use, whether it's around the house, school, work, it can have its acidity measured or its pH measured, and it is either an acid, a base, or a neutral. So using the pH scale, a pH of less than 7 is an acid, more than 7 or greater than 7 is a base, and neutral substances are 7 on the dot. Basically, sweet and salty foods, they're usually neutral. Sour foods are acidic, and bitter foods tend to be basic. Um, some cultures, they've worked out if they use acidic foods, or acidic substances like vinegar, you can preserve food and make it last longer. If we go to South America, people have found that quinine, which is fairly bitter, because it's basic, from trees, from the bark of trees, is a fantastic protection against malaria. Should bring it around. Um, basically, <laughs> this is the table I want you to rule up. Um, common substances. There's room there for one, two, three, four, five, six. Six acids, six neutrals, six bases, and I want you to put their pH beside them. Now, all of the substances we use are either acidic, basic, or neutral. So basically, the classification is based on not hydrogen ions, but hydronium ions. So when an acid dissolves in water, the H plus ion comes off and it joins to water to produce a hydronium ion. So that's what we measure as acidity. The more hydronium ions, the more acidic it is. So acids. Basically, a strong acid will completely ionize in aqueous solutions to give the hydronium plus an anion. So what are some common acids? Well, you've got hydrochloric acid, that's the one in your stomach, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. Now, because I'm lazy, I've written these up fairly sloppily, and you shouldn't be doing that. Um, <laughs> vinegar, lemon juice, and aspirin are also fairly acidic. Uh, say hello, Smedley. Hello. <laughs> All right, bases. Basically, strong bases will completely ionize. <laughs> I am not even editing this. Um, strong bases will completely ionize in an aqueous solution, and they will give an OH ion and a cation as well. So basically, weak bases, that should say bases, will not completely ionize in solution, but will exist in equilibrium. So weak acids and bases won't completely ionize. Now, common bases. We've got some sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, iron oxide or potassium oxide, copper hydroxide, and ammonia. Um, the ones we'll see around the house tend to be cleaning products. Ow! <laughs> uh, sodium carbonate, so, so bicarb soda, and oven cleaners. Now, indicators. This is what we use to tell how acidic something is. Every indicator has a range, and they change depending on the concentration of hydronium ions. <laughs> um, in solution, sorry, hydronium ions in solution to determine whether a solution is acidic or basic. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this table right here, what we have is we have our four main indicators that we will use. Now, here it says yellow and very acidic and very basic is blue, and this is bromothymol blue. What this means is, as it's changing across this range in the middle here, as it's changing across this range in the middle, it'll go from yellow to blue. And it will do this by going through green. So we can see with this range, this one's actually fairly specific. The change is reasonably, reasonably quick. Whereas if we get to litmus, it's actually not very specific at all. So if you've got anything between 5 and 8, 
it's really tough to tell if it's an acid or a base. It could be somewhere in the middle. Um, methyl orange is even more specific, and it goes from 3.1 to 3.4. I'm uh, sorry, 4.4. That's a range of 1.3, and that's a that's a fairly tight range. Um, when we look at when we look at universal indicator, that is actually a combination of um, indicators, and they vary in sensitivity. But basically, it's pretty good for getting at a certain a range of about one. You get a range of about one, so from like one to two, two to three, and so forth. And that's it. Uh, we'll get and we'll play with some masses and bases in class. And yeah, see you then. Say bye, Smedley.